everyone, welcome to Ian and Friends. This is our World Championships preview. I am Flow Bike Senior Editor Ian Dilly. And I am Michael Sheehan, Ian's friend. Yeah, so uh, we have UCI Road Worlds coming up in Innsbruck, Austria. We are going to give you a preview of what to expect over the course of eight days of racing. Yeah, let's start with the team time trials. These will be trade team team tri trials. Actually, the last year that they are doing the trade team team time trials, that's a lot to say. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting race. In the uh, men's race, we have Sunweb and BMC facing off on a course that is is really interesting. A, it's crazy long, like 62 kilometers, and it has an interesting climb in it. Yeah, it, uh, so the men and women, they're racing different courses on the team time trial and individual time trial as it happens. The men's uh, race both times does have a climb. So like Ian said, 62.1K, the climb is going to be 4.6 kilometers long at 5.7%. This happens 40K into the race, so we are going to see riders getting dispatched up this climb. Yeah. Um for me, uh, Sunweb, the defending champions, are definitely the odds-on favorite. Uh, Tom Dumoulin has been crushing it in time trials all year. Won the prologue at the Giro, won the long time trial at the Tour de France. Um, he also has a strong contingent, a support crew with him, American Chad Haga, of course. And um, I, you know, Wilco Kelderman and Michael Matthews is um, someone who you wouldn't necessarily expect to be a strong, strong time trials, but we saw him put in a ripping individual TT at the Tour de Suisse. So um, if they show up with that roster, they're going to be tough to beat. But BMC as well, um, you know, they crush the Tour de France TT. So. You, you know, normally I would agree with you. BMC, they have a powerhouse squad and they're always right there at the um, World's Team Time Trial. However, with that team folding and so much change in roster and personnel coming up for next year, this really seems to be what we've seen at the Vuelta in some recent races. BMC riders have like mentalities on like all over the spectrum right now. Some are just looking to get off the squad and go on to their uh, the teams that they've signed for next year. Some riders still have something to prove for the season. Me personally, I'm not expecting to see the um, BMC cohesion that we're necessarily used to in the Team Time Trial squad. Edix Quickstep, however, they are also usually right up there in the Team Time Trials, and I think that they're going to be a little bit of an unknown quantity. I disagree. I think BMC has held together really well for a team that's uh, kind of disbanding, uh, merging into a different team, riders looking for different spots. Um, you know, I, at the Tour, they rode really cohesively as a team. I mean, it is later in the season, but we've also seen them riding well as a team during the Pell Test. So uh, I think it's a valid point, but we'll, we'll, we'll see in the in the team time trial uh, on Sunday. Yeah, um, but Sunweb, again, hands down favorite. Same on the women's side. Uh, Sunweb also won women's in 2017. And there are definitely a couple squads that can challenge them, but Sunweb has really been the dominant force this season uh, every time that a Women's World Tour race has had a team time trial in it. Yeah, the place where we really saw the status quo challenge with Sunweb was at the Crescent Vargarda time trial, and this was a super, or a relatively long time trial for the Women's uh, World Tour, 42 kilometers. And uh, their Bulls Dolman uh, really stole the show. They had their A team. Probably the team they're going to line up with at the World Championships. Uh, Anna Vanderbregen obviously leading that squad. So um, it's going to be a tight race. And Mitchelton Scott also, um, they've been right up in the mix, placing second at the Giro Rosa behind Sunweb, um, led by world champ champion Annemiek van Vleuten. Um, so it's going to be uh, an equally tight race in the women's team time trial. You know, at the um, Tour de France team time trial, the top five teams were only separated by like 11 seconds. Yeah, uh, tied race. Yeah, let's move on. Moving on to the individual time trial. Again, like I said, men and women are doing a slightly different course. The men's course does feature a climb. These are going to be different courses than the team time trial though. Yeah, I, I kind of want to back up too. What's interesting about the difference between the men's and women's courses in the team time trial is the women's doesn't have the climb. It's like downhill the whole way. Yeah, it's it would be ripping fast. It, it is pretty much a false flat downhill acro um, across the entire 53.8K that the women's team tri time trial is racing. 
So yeah, individual time trial, men are racing 52.5 kilometers, women are gonna do 28.5. And again, the men, they have a different climb this time. It is two and a half K at 10%. So it's not nothing like what we saw in Bergen last year where there was a finishing climb that really decided the race, but still a bit of a kicker that you're going to have to be able to get up. Yeah, this is an interesting climb because it's the same climb that comes early in the men's road race. Um, it's probably going to be a launching pad. And for the the way, really all the road races. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, and it's probably going to be a launching pad for the early breakaway, uh, but it's going to play a critical role in, in the men's time trial. Um, I don't see anyone beating Rohan Dennis in the men's time trial. I mean, he's been, you know, he won by 55 seconds in the Vuelta España stage 16 individual TT, also won the prologue, um, you know, won the time trial in the Giro. You know, obviously Tom Dumoulin is, is going to come prepared, be a challenger to defend his title from 2017, um, but it, it seems like Rohan's, Rohan Dennis is race to lose. I'd have to agree with you. I think that Rowan's worst enemy is just going to be himself. Sometimes he just doesn't pull it together on the big championship day. But if if he has the legs that we all know that he has, yeah, it's his race to lose. Yeah, and then on the women's side, um, again, the two top uh, Dutch favorites, Annemiek van Vleuten and Anna van der Breggen. Um, you know, van Vleuten is the defending world champion, van, or... Uh, Van Vleuten is the defending world champion, Van der Breggen, lost to her by only 12 seconds in Bergen, and it's going to be another tight race. I mean, these two are such intense rivals, and Van Vleuten has definitely circled this uh, time trial. Um, she said she likes the course. It's, it doesn't have a big climb like the men's race, but it is rolling with some good pitches, so um, it, it, it'll be a good showdown. Yeah, and uh, I think that we should mention briefly the men's under-23 road race where we have American Brandon, Brandon McNulty. He came second last year, and that was his first year in the U23s, so this is his second year in the category. He will definitely be looking to improve on that second place. So that's exciting if you are going to be watching from the United States of America. Um, Road races. We have a whole slew of road races, uh, junior men, women, U23 men, and then of course the elite races. We're really just going to touch on the elite races for this little preview that we're doing. But uh, yeah, women racing 156 kilometers at 7,900 feet of elevation. Men 260 kilometers at 15,000 feet. This is going to be a world championships for the ages. Yeah, everybody is super excited about this world championship strictly for the fact that it is ridiculously hard. Um, you know, set in, you know, Innsbruck, which is considered the heart of the Alps, pretty unless you're going up or down the valley from Innsbruck, you're climbing up a huge mountain and the core of this course is the Olympic circuit. Um, it's a roughly 24 kilometer circuit with an eight kilometer climb every lap. And um, the climb is interesting. It has pitches to it, pitches at like 10% will flatten out, pitch up again. So um, yeah, it's gonna prove super challenging. Um, in the women's race, they're only doing it two times, I believe. Three. Three, okay. So I, I, it'll be interesting to see uh, if it's enough of an obstacle to um, really, you know, I think it'll be the racers that make the race in the women's race. They're going to have to ride an aggressive attacking style of race. Yeah, so this eight kilometer long climb that we have on these short circuits, it's only at 5.7%. There are definitely pitches, but it's really going to depend on how it's raced. Uh, some of the quicker, punchier riders are going to be able to survive this climb if the climbers don't just rip into it. That being said, if you have the just true climbers making a point of breaking up the field, going up these circuits, uh, yeah, it's not going to be a race for the Peter Sagans <laughs> this year. Uh, let's take a look at just how this course is going to play out. We start outside of Innsbruck, and like we mentioned, it pretty much starts out on the men's elite individual time trial course. So we're going to see that same opening climb before we get to these circuits. Like Ian said, Women are doing three circuits with this 8K 
long climb. The men are going to do six circuits, and then they get a bonus climb once they're uh, finishing up the sixth circuit. You want to tell me a little bit about this? The highway to hell. <laughs> the, the road to Graham Bar <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out the pronunciations by the time the race starts, I promise. But it is a ridiculously hard climb. Um, you know, pitches at up to, there's a 300 meter section of road in this climb that pitches at over 20%. And then I think the real crux of this race is not only going to be this final climb, but a super technical like, six kilometer descent down back in Innsbruck and two kilometer flat finishing straight. Um, so it's really gonna make for, you know, anybody's race. And then again, I think it is gonna depend on how the race is raced. If it's raced somewhat conservatively and like we see in a lot of these men's world tour events, comes down to the final climb, um, something similar to San Sebastian. Um, you know, we could see somebody um, like uh, Peter Sagan still in the mix over this final climb. You know, I think if uh, the teams with slew of climbers, like the French team, the Colombians, you know, if they ride a more aggressive race and really try and wear down the peloton on the Olympic circuit, um, we could see, you know, a select group of favorites coming to this final climb, you know, maybe five, six riders, something like that. Yeah, if they race this race hard, it is going to be decimating for the field. There are not going to be a lot of finishers. That being said, it is going to be a really, really fun one to watch. So we do hope you tune in. Let's take a look at the favorites. Yeah, so uh, let's do our picks. In the men's race, I cannot pick against Julian Alaphilippe. He two stages of the Tour de France, plus the KOM. Plus then he went on to win Classica San Sebastian. And for me, it's San Sebastian that kind of cements him as a favorite in this race. Um, it's a very similar type finish with a, you know, a steep climb, you know, similarly only two or three K long, and then a technical descent to the finish and a flat run in. I think if he's there at the end, he's gonna be very hard to beat. He's got a fast finish. Um, who's your pick for the mint race? I, you know, I would really like to disagree with you, but that is actually a really well thought out pick. So <laughs> hats off to you. Thank you. Uh, I am just really watching Simon Yates <laughs> pick apart the Vuelta and these finishing climbs pretty much day after day. He is just so aggressive, and I think that his aggressive racing on top of his just climbing ability that he's showing off this year is really going to lend itself to a good world for him. He, he's got to be my pick. He's racing from the front. He's taking chances, and that's what you have to do in the World Championships. There comes a point when you're going to have to make your winning move, and Simon Yates is obviously not scared of putting himself out there. So if he is coming off the Vuelta with any um, legs left, I don't know who can beat him. Okay, and the women. Who's your pick? Um, so again, I think it comes down to the two Dutch favorites. I am going to take Annemiek van Vleuten. Um, you know, she, uh, she, um, let's talk about the Olympics. <laughs> she, she, she had a rough Olympics. She was about to win the Olympic road race, crashed on the final descent into Rio, and um, Anna van der Breggen went on to win. Since that time, you know, we've really seen her on a tear. Um, the Dutch women at Worlds last year had like four riders in the final breakaway, the final selection, and it was Chantal Black who was really the opportunist to go away. This is a much different course, you know, if it's raced aggressively and Van Vleuten is extremely aggressive on the climb. So I think she's gonna come to this race just looking to rip people's legs off and um, it's gonna be who can stick with her. And it's also gonna depend on how much time she can gain um, over that final climb and whether she can hold on to it in the in the run into the finish because she's not necessarily the the fastest finisher in a, in a, in a flat finish. Yeah, uh, I'm in agreement. I think it's going to be one of these two Dutch women. However, I am going with Anna van der Breggen. I think that she needs a little bit of redemption after La Course. Crushing defeat. Crushing defeat. <laughs> so, so yeah, the, these two uh, riders have been just going back and forth and I do think that this is the uh, race for Anna, Anna van der Breggen. Yeah, um, let's do our dark horse picks, everybody's favorite. Um, I'm gonna start with the men's side. I am going with Dan Martin mm -hmm. of Ireland. Um, not necessarily a dark horse in the fact that he has already won uh, two monuments. Um, great one day racer. 
but I think he fits into that category of individual riders, uh, opportunists who tend to do well at the World Championships. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of riders who are not necessarily the odds-on favorites winning at the World Championships. Let's start with Rui Costa, um, Mikhail Kwiatowski. He's obviously a favorite this year, but when he won, uh, he was a bit of an unexpected rider. Um, and then even Peter Sagan, I don't think anybody thought, um, you know, as a rider from Slovakia, not having a super strong team behind him that he would you know be able to to take the win in, in his first world championships in richmond so dan martin if he lets the big teams you know the france colombia belgium spain italy kind of fight it out amongst themselves you know he could be in with a shot at the end and he's such a smart um tactical rider i, I could really see him taking this Fair enough. I have a, another rider who will have to be an opportunist to get the win, but Mike Woods. When I look at the climbs at Innsbruck, I, he, Woods is really the rider that I think of. There's uh, nothing really all that long that he will get dispatched on, and he's a really punchy rider, and if he can slip away, I don't see the favorites immediately jumping on the Canada jersey and chasing him down as if he was a major threat, but he has really proven throughout the year, liege baston liege just recently at the Volta Espana, he got a stage win. He's got the legs. This is a fantastic course for him, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do out here. Yeah, I mean, this final climb is very similar to the uh, summit finish that he just won at the Vuelta Espana. I would say the only thing Woods maybe has going against him is this technical descent to the finish. He has um, worked a lot on his descending, but I think he'll still say it's a bit of an Achilles heel. Um, so he'll need a pretty good gap over the over the top of this climb if he's going to make it to the finish solo. But yeah, I mean, we are the official broadcaster for Canada, and yeah, um, we'll definitely be be rooting for him wearing the uh, the maple leaf. Let's move on to the women's star courses. I'm going to go with a rider that. Um, it's kind of sacrosanct to say as a dark horse, but given the strength of the Dutch team, you know, she's not going to be the Ozon favorite. Marianne Voss, you know, uh, pretty much the greatest women's racer of all time, is, is n maybe not even going to be the protected rider for the Dutch team at this race, but she has been on insane form at the end of the season. Um, one Crescent Vergarda with a ridiculous ta attack you know, through the last corner into the finish and then dominated the Tour of Norway, which was these um, you know, really aggressive, difficult racing, reduced bunch sprint finishes, and um, she won every stage. So if there's a small group coming to the finish at the end of the women's road race, it's definitely gonna be Marion Voss winning. Yeah, she knows how to win a world championship, yeah. so. <laughs> Multiple. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, I am going with a younger rider, Katia Nuyadoma. She's uh, 23 years old from Poland. She's really been impressing me this entire season, really from start to finish. She's been a consistent feature on the podium. She just won the KOM jersey at the Tour of Norway. Actually, just a couple hours ago, she got second place in today's stage at uh, Lairdesh in France. So I think that she has some end of season form. And yeah, she, she has the uh, climbing chops and she could just pull it off. Yeah, we saw her ride a phenomenal race at uh, Trofeo Alfredo Binda Women's World Tour race, uh, which similarly, she attacked on the final climb and was able to ride solo to the finish. I think the interesting thing about that race was it was a torrential downpour and she really showed the strength of her bike handling skills descending through the rain. Um, Innsbruck, the weather forecast looks relatively good, but at the end of the week, we are seeing some potential showers on hand. Um, you know, this is the Alps uh, at the end of September, so it could be rough weather. And, you know, if we're, if we're seeing a technical wet descent like that, she, she could definitely be a favorite. So yeah, it'll, it'll be a phenomenal race either way. And we will actually be on site in Innsbruck with daily recaps of the World Championships. Uh, tune in to Flow Bikes. Yeah. Please join us. It's going to be a phenomenal week of racing. Really the best backdrop that you could ask for for a world championships. Looking forward to seeing you there.